The sun, giver of light and life, shines most powerfully at the equator. Here, it powers an extraordinarily rich zone of life. Brilliant and bizarre species from three continents, three oceans. More than a line on a map, Equator is a powerful force of nature. At the equator, the sun rises over the greatest rainforest on Earth. Amazonia is unified by over a thousand rivers of the sun. They flow like blood through its body. They are its life force. Sunlight and water create the energy to sustain life on a vast scale. But all that life all that richness comes from the miracle of the leaf. This one vast rainforest may contain half of all the world's species. Here, predator and prey act out the ancient struggle to eat and avoid being eaten. But the Jaguar's forest is only one part of Amazonia. There is also a rich and remarkable water forest. Much of Amazonia floods for half of each year, creating a world that is strange and unique. An animal, looking like a cross between a fish and a cow, drifts slowly through a river meadow. River wolves streak through the water forest. They hunt fish among the branches. A fish that's like a monkey. And a survivor from the ancient past. Piraricu is an armored dinosaur among fish. This lightning fast hunter has survived in this region for a hundred million years. Piraricu has endured great upheavals during Amazonia's past and must now accept the great changes that will soon take place. In November, storm clouds gather. The equator offers its greatest gift to Amazonia, rain. Rain comes as the sun's energy focuses more strongly on Amazonia. Intense heat brings a change in weather patterns across the entire region. Out in the Atlantic Ocean, the sun warms surface waters that evaporate into clouds. At the same time, strengthening trade winds push the clouds inland across the Amazon basin. As the heavy air moves over the vast forest, it gathers up even more moisture from the trees. Clouds fatten and it rains. 
Finally, the supersaturated air encounters the 6,000 meter barrier of the Andes Mountains. As the clouds rise, they cool, releasing their water as rain and as snow. All this then flows down the mountains back to Amazonia. The vast river system receives 20% of all available fresh water in the world. And nearly all of it comes in the wet season. Amazonia covers the northern third of Latin America and is almost perfectly flat. All the water that enters the vast drainage basin at this time fills rivers faster than they can drain away, and so Amazonia slowly begins to flood. The rainy season will last for half a year. It will transform the lives of creatures here like nowhere else on Earth. Where a beautiful butterfly basked and glided among sundered branches, fish dart through a flooded woodland. Fish migrate from rivers and streams to feed among branches of trees that may be 15 meters underwater and will be for months. Floodwaters greatly expand the feeding prospects for fish, but they have forced the land animals to flee. Just as the jaguar has moved on, so has its prey. Along with giant rodents and other mammals, many lizards, birds and insects have departed. But now there is new prey and new predators. The flooded forest has become the realm of river wolves. Giant otters now occupy much of the jaguar's hunting ground, and it is vast. Hundreds of thousands of square kilometers of rainforest are submerged. Just as plants and animals must find strategies for surviving in dry forest, so they must have ways to survive the flood. As the waters rise, insects from the forest floor climb desperately to safety. Up here, there are few places to hide, and even fewer places to overtake. Any struggles are quickly detected. High above the water, clinging to a tree, this insect should be safe enough. One meter long arowana are as agile as monkeys. In fact, they are known as water monkeys. They usually hunt small fish, but during the flood, water monkeys also feast on insects. They patrol close to the surface, scanning the branches for possible prey. During the wet season, water monkeys live in one world and hunt in another. 
Arowana have a brilliant strategy for reaping the rich insect rewards of the flooded river. Just as water monkeys benefit from this time of plenty, so do other fish. When the forest floods, strange sounds are heard. It's the sound of trees in fruit. These exploding nuts are from rubber trees, one of Amazonia's most famous. As they ripen under the heat of the glaring sun, their surface skins shrivel, releasing the nuts. Nuts are spread far and wide by floodwaters. Even when soaked in water for a long time, the nut's waterproof shell prevents rot and protects from predators. But the tambaki has found a way to crack this problem. The tambaki uses its funnel-shaped nostrils to help it find nuts that are its passion. Its powerful jaws and teeth are perfect nutcrackers. Nuts are rich in protein, fat and minerals. They're excellent food if you can get them. Tambaki eat nuts from several kinds of trees. They are so dedicated to nutcracking that small fish accompany them to dine on the crumbs. Most trees produce fruits and nuts during the wet season, so tambaki do most of their feeding at this time. Later in the year, they must use other strategies to survive. Another dedicated fruit and nut eater lives high up in swamp forest trees. Wakari is one of the few monkeys in the world with teeth and jaws strong enough to crack nuts and seeds. They form most of its diet. In Amazonia, a fish and a monkey have both become specialized to gain the riches of the nut harvest. Another mammal living in the flooded forest is the three-toed sloth. Sloths devour the leaves of cecropia trees. The tree is protected by stinging ants, but they're no deterrent to thick-furred sloths. The leaves offer little nourishment, so sloths must spend most of their time eating and use as little energy as possible, apart from holding on, as this baby is doing. Sloths are not good walkers, and they rarely move from their home trees. But when a sloth does need to move, it much prefers to swim. During the flood, the waters are safe. There are no enemies. This is the best time to move from tree to tree to seek new food or maybe to strike out in search of a mate. <laughs> 